Hey everyone, I'm Jason O'Dell. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I see a lot of posts, um, various social media posts talking about, is it really worth getting the Z native lens over the F mount lens in its um, you know, comparable versions? And I, I have one of these comparisons today. I'm gonna look at the two 50 millimeter 1.8 lenses. Um, once upon a time, I had the 50 millimeter 1.4 uh, for Nikon F mount and I traded that in for the 1.8 version um, only because I wasn't using it a ton and the 1.8 was in by all accounts just as good or almost as good. Now why do you have one of these primes? You, you have them usually for portrait work where you want to render nice out of focus bokeh. Uh, the whole point of a fast lens is to be able to shoot it either wide open or pretty close to wide open, right? I mean, that's the point. Once you get down to f8, all lenses perform really wonderful. So we're going to look at two. So this is the my original f mount lens, the uh, 51.8G for Nikon f mount. Now I can use that on my Nikon Z cameras by just attaching it to the FTZ adapter like that, so it makes it a little bit bigger. And um, so that's the 518. Uh, G lens. So this this will work on both Nikon F mount and with the adapter Nikon Z cameras. I'm going to compare that with the AF uh, uh, the Nikon 50 millimeter 1.8 S. So this is this is a more expensive lens, um, but you can see by the time you have the two together, they're about the same size. This one's a little heavier. Um, this is a very light light lens. Now there's also a pretty significant price difference. This this lens will set you back about $500. You can find the 51.8 S uh, G, excuse me, for probably under $200 easily. So big price difference. So I just did some quick test shots wide open to take a, a quick look at how these would compare. So let's go over to Lightroom. I shot these with my Z7 in RAW. I'm going to go into Lightroom and we're going to take a look at that, okay? Here I've got two photos that I've pulled up in Lightroom, both shot with my Nikon Z7 and on a tripod with both of these 50 millimeter lenses. On the left, we have the Nikon 50 millimeter 1.8S, so this is the native Z mount lens. And on the right is the 51.8G lens, which is the native F mount lens. And the first thing you can see when I just look at these two pictures is it looks like the framing is a little off. And the funny thing here is I didn't move anything. So clearly there's slight differences in effective focal length um, depending on where you focus these lenses. And that's just a little nuance. It's not a big deal because you're going to frame up in the camera. But you can see these were taken on the same tripod with the same settings and the framing looks a little bit different. So what we want to do here is just take a look. These were shot wide open. Another thing you can see is that although they were shot with um, aperture priority, uh, the exposure setting is a little different. So what happened here? We have 1 20th of a second for the Z lens, 1 15th of a second with the um, G lens. What that tells us is that the, the Z mount lens is transmitting more light. Both of these were set to wide open. So I'm getting a little faster shutter speed using the native Z lens. That's a slight advantage, about a third of a stop. So let's zoom in on these and take a look and see at center sharpness and edge sharpness. Again, these are wide open f1.8. So here's the center of the frame. I think you can see pretty clearly that the 1.8 lens for the Z mount, the 1.8S, the 50S, clearly is sharper than the G lens. Um, in fact, when I did some quick comparisons, what I found was that the to get similar sharpness to what I'm seeing wide open with the Z mount lens, the S lens, I have to stop the the uh, G lens down to about f2.8 to get a similar sharpness. So there's another huge advantage right there alone. If you're shooting wide open, you're going to get much sharper center sharpness. Now let's see how that compares to the edges of the frame. So let's go up here to the corner and take a look. Same thing. The Z lens, although it does start to, to soften a little bit in the corners, it's significantly better than the F mount lens. Okay, so that's just without question. Now I've got another set of, of pictures here that we want to take a look at. 
which is to just look at things like chromatic aberration and, and bokeh. And so let's take a look at these. So again, on the left is the 518S, on the right is the 518G. Um, both of these, again, shot with the same tripod. You can see it looks like the composition is a little different. Well, that's really more an effect of the way the lens focuses. So we'll zoom in here. This is a really exciting photo. But we'll zoom in here. And again, I think you can pretty clearly see the significant improvement in sharpness um, with the Z-mount lens. Chromatic aberration is better with the Z-mount. If we look down here at the reflected light, it's just there's less of this green fringing that you can see here with the, the G lens. So again, what does this mean? It really means that if you're shooting wide open, portrait kind of work, you can, you can really shoot the 50 millimeter 1S, uh, 1.8S lens wide open and not lose any significant sharpness Whereas with the 50 millimeter 1.8G, you need to stop down to about f2.8 to really start seeing the improvement in sharpness. Both of these are good lenses. There's no question there. Uh, but if you're looking for the um, to make a decision on a 50 millimeter lens, is it worth the extra, say, two hundred dollars maybe to get the the Z mount lens? Well, if if you do serious portraits, I absolutely think so um, because. I actually thought that my 51.8 was as good or almost as good as the 51.4G. This 51.8S is clearly head and shoulders above it. So that's my take on these 50 millimeter lenses. I'm Jason O'Dell. Don't forget to check out my website at luminescentphoto.com. I will see you next time. Thank you.